morning. Welcome you to worship this morning as we celebrate the first Sunday after Christmas and as we wrap up our series looking at how we can expect more out of Christmas. And today we're going to look at the story of Simeon uh, when he meets Jesus in the temple courts and how uh, Simeon's interaction with him and what Simeon uh, received from the Lord is the same thing that we receive as well. We're going to follow the order of worship that's printed for you in your service folder. You can also follow along with the screen. Our opening hymn is hymn 78, O Light of Gentile Nations. Himself, 
our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin and transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson for our consideration this morning as we celebrate this first Sunday after Christmas is found in the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, reading from the 45th chapter. Gather, come, draw near together, you survivors from the nations. They have no knowledge, those who are lifting up their idols of wood and praying to a God that cannot save. Make an announcement and come close. Let them consult together. Who made this known ahead of time? From time past, who announced it? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no God except me, a righteous God and Savior. There is no one except me. Turn to me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth, because I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, from my mouth a righteous word has gone out, and it will not return unfulfilled. Indeed, to me every knee will bow, and every tongue will swear allegiance. Only in the Lord, they will say of me, only in the Lord is their true righteousness and strength. To him they will come and be ashamed, all those who are angry at him. In the Lord all the descendants of Israel will be justified, they will be praised by him. The word of the Lord. Be Our second lesson is found in Paul's letter to the Colossians, reading from the third chapter. Therefore, as God's elect, holy and loved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive each other if anyone has a complaint against anyone else. Forgive, just as Christ forgave you. And in addition to all these things, put on love, which ties things together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts, to which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And everything you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for the first Sunday after Christmas is the gospel according to Luke, reading from the second chapter. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, waiting for the comfort of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law, Simeon took him into his arms and praised God. He said, Lord, you now dismiss your servant in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and the child's mother were amazed at the things that were spoken about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Listen carefully. This child is appointed for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Anna, a prophetess, was there. She was the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then she was a widow of 84 years. She did not leave the temple complex since, since she was worshiping with fasting and prayers night and day. Standing nearby at that very hour, she gave thanks to the Lord. She kept speaking about the child to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had accomplished everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. 
The child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day in 41. Let all together praise our God. Fresh in our minds is that 
we too get caught up in the giving and the getting part of Christmas. We'd like to think that commercialism doesn't play a part in our Christmas celebration, but that just isn't the fact. We're all guilty of it, myself included. And unfortunately, while those answers are truthful, they're pretty narrow-minded. And even though that's probably what the person asking the question is expecting to hear from you, I really don't think it tells the whole story of what we got for Christmas. Xboxes, PS5s, drones, bows, books, video games, electronics of every variety, gift cards, gold hard cash, all of those things we received for Christmas from our friends and, and our family members. And while we would say that every good and perfect gift is from above, I don't think we would say that we received any of those things directly from God. We've spent this entire Advent and Christmas season asking ourselves, encouraging ourselves to expect more out of Christmas. So why is it then that the blessings that we receive directly from God this Christmas aren't the things that first pop into our minds and flow from our lips when we hear that question, what did you get for Christmas? Perhaps we've taken those things for granted. Perhaps, other than remembering that Jesus is born on Christmas, we are not really sure what we do receive from God at Christmas. Perhaps we recognize that God doesn't bless us only at Christmas, that he's so good and gracious that he blesses us all year round, and we just assume that people know that. Perhaps. But God has blessed us with gifts this Christmas, precious gifts, Maybe more than we even realize. Well, this morning, Simeon is going to help us recognize and appreciate those gifts again. With the help of the Holy Spirit, as we eagerly dig into God's Word, maybe we can ask a slightly different question this morning. Maybe we can ask, did you get what you expected for Christmas? A popular hypothetical question asks people, if you had one wish, what would you wish for? And such a broad question is obviously going to have a, a wide range of responses. But one response that seems to pop up more often than others is that people would wish for world peace. People want world peace. And, and while that is a beautiful sentiment, that is never going to happen on this side of Judgment Day. And the Bible is very clear on this. Jesus said about the last days, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed because these things must happen. But that is not yet the end. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Uh, world peace is an admirable wish, but it's an empty one. But that's not the point. The point is that people, many people, are longing for peace. Many people would be willing to admit that they wish that there was world peace out there, but not as many people would be willing to admit, admit that they're lacking in inner peace, that they're lacking spiritual peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding is something that people long for. It's something that people are searching for. Whether they realize it or not, that's the question, that's the desire that led the philosophers to ask those big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? And how do I get there? But the devil doesn't like people to think about that kind of inner peace. The devil doesn't want inner peace to be any part of the discussion because it's not good for him. He would much rather have us focus on outward physical peace as the way to solve the problem that we feel in our hearts. And he was pretty good at accomplishing that purpose with the Jews of Jesus' day. 100% of the Jews were looking for the Messiah to come. 99% of them wanted him to bring political peace. The Pharisees had reconstructed their teachings so that they felt that they could achieve inner peace by what they did, and so they no longer needed the Messiah that God promised. There was a small, faithful remnant who didn't fall for the devil's trap who still looked for the Messiah 
to be the savior from sin. And Simeon was one of those faithful few. We're not told much about Simeon other than the fact that he was a believer. Righteous, devout, filled with the Holy Spirit is a good description for any believer. But it seems that Simeon had a special measure of the Spirit that allowed him to know that he would not die before he saw the Christ, before he saw his Savior. And so it's at least 40 days after the first Christmas when Simeon is moved by the Holy Spirit to go into the temple courts, and there he happens upon an ordinary-looking young couple, obviously very poor, looking at their purification and dedication offerings, holding a very ordinary-looking one-month-old boy. And it's here that Simeon receives his first Christmas present, exactly what he was expecting for God had kept his promise. In that little baby, Simeon saw the Christ. And listen to how he responds. Lord, you now dismiss your servant in peace according to your word. Because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon received from God what every single person is looking for inner peace, spiritual peace. He received it because he saw it. He held salvation in his arms. God had kept his promise. He had received, he had revealed his salvation so that the whole world could see it. He had returned to Zion just like Isaiah had foreseen. My dear friends, Simeon was a sinner just like you and just like me. Yes, he was outwardly righteous. Yes, he was devout in his faith. Yes, he was the model Christian. But he was also was a sinner. And his conscience reminded him of that every single day. Every single day, a war waged inside his heart. And you can imagine the battle scene, can't you? Many people like to believe that uh, Simeon was an elderly gentleman, but we're never actually told how old he was. Let's, for argument's sake today, imagine him to be that elderly gentleman. You can imagine how the devil was whispering in his ear as each day went by without seeing his Savior. Each day was a day closer to not having that promise of God fulfilled, to not seeing his salvation. You can imagine the devil tempting him to doubt God's promises. God's not going to come through. Look at how old you are. You're never going to see this. And the longer he waited, the greater that temptation must have been. But you and I can relate to Simeon, can't we? There are plenty, plenty of God's promises that seem a long time in coming. And the temptation is there for us too to doubt God's promises and the devil is there whispering in our ears telling us that God isn't going to come through. He's not going to keep his promise. But Simeon, despite the temptations, would not be swayed. He held firm to God's promises and when the time had fully come, God kept his promise, and he sent his son, and there Simeon stood, holding his salvation in his arms. And that prompted him to speak words that are timeless, words that Christians have been speaking and singing ever since. Lord, you now dismiss your servant in peace, according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. Light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. Did you get what you expected for Christmas? Maybe right now you're feeling like Simeon got a little bit more than you did. He saw his Savior with his own eyes, even if he was just a little baby. He actually touched his skin and held him in his hands. My dear friends, we have received the same gifts as Simeon, and in some cases, even 
more. Simeon received that true inner peace that comes from knowing that his salvation was secure. Haven't we received the same? Simeon saw his salvation with his own eyes. Didn't we see the same babe just a couple days ago? Didn't we see him in the manger? Didn't we see the shepherds and hear the angels? Well, we may not have seen them physically with our own eyes. They practically jumped off the pages of Scripture as we read those timeless truths and sang those sacred songs. Simeon held the Christ in his hands. He touched him. We hold the Christ in our hands every time we partake of the bread, every time we receive the cup. Every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are touching our Savior, and he comes to us for the same reason that he came to Simeon, to bring salvation. And that's why it's so fitting that after that same personal encounter that Simeon experienced, when we experience it, we often sing the same song that Simeon sang. Lord, you now dismiss your servant in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon could depart from the temple courts in peace because he knew that God had kept his promise, that his salvation was secure. That's why he could depart in peace. It didn't mean that he died the next day. In fact, the Bible never tells us when Simeon died. And the same is true for us. We can depart from the Lord's Supper in peace, not meaning that we're just ready to die now. No, it's so much more than that. When we ask the Lord to depart in peace, it's as if we're saying, here God is my whole life. You gave it, you saved it, now use it. Free me to be your servant. Free me from that inner conflict. Free me from all the doubts. Free me to serve you in whatever way is pleasing you in your sight. Did you get what you expected for Christmas? Maybe not at first glance, but a closer look says we got what we expected and maybe even more. You got what the whole world is looking for, true spiritual peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding, which cannot be understood apart from the Christ child. And now that you have that peace, let's take to heart the encouragement of the Apostle Paul in our second lesson. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts to which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And everything you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please sing. Now may that peace of God which we have received this Christmas, which surpasses our understanding, may it keep you in your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, we take a few moments to remember the blessings that God has given to us and to return them in thanksgiving. Come, 
Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close our service with him 77 in his temple, now behold him. Thank you. 